It is time right now for War of the Roses right. on KDWB. Let's do it. And Melinda that we're having on. Oh, yeah. We have to bring this up because we kind of made an uh-oh on Tuesday. No, you might remember this. I'm going to fill you in a little bit. And if you didn't hear it, it doesn't really matter. But if you did, there was a woman named Melinda on the show on Group Therapy on Tuesday. And we were talking to Melinda, and I said, oh, this is her fake name. It's not really Melinda. Guess what? It really was. <laughs> yeah. Her name is Melinda. Well, some she'll tell you the whole story, but she got a ring from somebody, and she wants to know whether this person has a crush on her or whether it was just a really generous present. So we're going to start off with Melinda and the ring edition of War of the Roses right now on KDWB. <laughs> Bank calls to take a survey and you're cheating? Hang up. It's War of the Roses on KDWB. So a really different War of the Roses that came up on the show earlier this week because Melinda called in for a group therapy. Now, Melinda was on the show, and you might remember it happened right around this time on Tuesday morning. Melinda called because she was worried that her friend of a few years but not a close friend gave her an expensive present and she kind of gets flirty vibes from her that she might kind of like her a little bit. Yeah. Um, and uh, so she, I said, let's do War of the Roses. We'll call your friend and see if she wants to do a couple's activity with you. Before I had okay. you kind of go over your story, I want to, this is a, a big concern that we had. I'm not going to out somebody on the radio. If she's if she likes, you know, women and she's not out, I ain't going to out anybody on the radio and go, oh, guess what? We found out that you all like women and you blah, blah, blah. So if she chooses you, let's agree. We ain't playing this on the radio. Deal? Yeah, I don't care if it gets played. I just would like some answers no, for totally, my own Totally makes sense. Knowledge. So give me, some back, give me yeah. the background story. I know people heard it the other day on Tuesday if you're listening, but give me the background story. On your friend, and uh, we will say her name now, but again, if it doesn't work out, then it's not going to be on the radio. What is her uh -huh. name? Uh, it's Becca. What happened with Becca that made you wonder if she's got a little girl crush on you? You're married, by the way. Well, to, I'm, to a man. I'm married. I'm, yes. um, yeah, I'm married. I've got an 18 month old baby. Okay. <laughs> Pretty well spoken for. Um, yeah. And she knows you're married. Yeah, it's not, yeah, it's not a close friend. It's um, pretty much we're work friends, and we've hung out outside of work, like, a few times. Um, and it was my birthday, and she was like, oh, it's your birthday. I'll take you to lunch today. And I didn't think too much of it, and I went, and then she gave me a present, and it was a ring, and it just, it looked very expensive to me, like at least a couple hundred dollars, but I'm i am thinking maybe even more. Wow. And it just was weird that, again, this is just somebody I talked to at work, and we've gone out after work a couple times for her to give me an expensive ring. Just, it, it was just weird, and I, I'm wondering, maybe I'm reading too much into it. Or maybe it was supposed to mean something romantic. I don't know. And I get it. And I was talking. I made a joke about how if my friend Nate gave me a ring for my birthday, I'd be like, "Bro, what is this? <laughs> yeah. What is this all about?" Um, uh, because a ring symbolizes something. It's either like a really strong friendship or maybe mm -hmm. a little romantic. But that's weird that she gave you a ring, knowing that you're married and not even being that close. But you worry that maybe mm -hmm. she's a little bit socially like inept when it comes to things like this. But you also don't want to send her the wrong message. You got a quandary because you don't want to wear the ring. I'm going to mm -hmm. guess you don't really want to wear it. I don't. Like, I kind of, I don't really want to bring it up, but I don't want to. I'm just in a very weird place. Because you don't want to lead her on. You don't want to wear the ring. You don't want to hurt her feelings by not wearing the ring. So we kind of talked mm -hmm. about that. And I said, you know what? It could be just maybe somebody who is just a very generous gift giver or whatever so we said let's put her on war of the roses and see if we offer a couple's activity and we say couple's activity what uh -huh. are you going to offer jenny what kind of things are you going to well, offer i'm thinking about things around the twin cities so we could do like a paddle board outing um some axe throwing wine tasting we got a few wineries around here okay so okay so what we're going to do is we're going to call her and and say, who do you want to 
go on these one of these activities with which which activity and if she chooses you listen we're not going to out her we're going to like it's it's whatever it's going to be fine but if she doesn't choose you then we're going to find out that you know we'll we'll, we'll it, it's confusing we'll get to the bottom of it do i hear a baby in the background uh Yes. Well, she just <laughs> said she's got an 18-month-old and married and all that That's a little, that's a baby. <laughs> all right. Hang on. We'll come back in a second. We'll talk to Jonathan Fogel from Fogel Family Law and get his take on things in a second. Uh, but we'll make the phone call first to Becca to see who she wants to go on the uh, date with. Okay? And now, the dramatic conclusion of War of the Roses. Well, a girl can help. 101.3 KDWB. Okay, in case you missed it, I'll give you a little bring up speed a little bit before we make the phone call on War of the Roses Part 2. So, uh, a woman named Melinda was on the show earlier this week for group therapy. And I screwed up. I thought, oh, well, she changed her name so nobody would know what it was. No, it turns out Melinda was her real name. Yeah. No big deal. And uh, she had said that she's got a friend who's a friend, but not a really super close friend that gave her an expensive ring for her birthday. And she thought, well, that's kind of weird because she's married and the ring from somebody that's expensive that you don't really aren't really close to is a very personal gift. And she doesn't really want to wear it, but she doesn't want to hurt her feelings by not wearing it. And then she doesn't want to lead her on by wearing the ring. So what did she do? So we talked to her the other day and I said, it could be just kind of a socially awkward kind of a person who over gifts. You know what I mean? Or just like the person's a big gifter in general. You right. Know? Like that's their love language. So be, we said before you read too much into it, let's do a War of the Roses and find out whether she likes you romantically or whether she's just kind of a generous giver or maybe doesn't know what the limits are for gifting. So we're going to make the phone call to the giver right now to see if she chooses Melinda for a romantic couple. God, I'm confused myself. <laughs> but it makes sense, right? Yes. Just just know that Melinda is wondering if Becca likes her in a romantic way. <laughs> and then after that, we'll talk to Jonathan Fogel from Fogel Family Law. He's always got a good take on things. On uh, KWB, we're making the phone call right now. Oh, Thanks so much for taking that survey, Becca. So for taking the time to do this with me today, I do have a fun little like couples outing options that I can give you of what you can do. So it's up to you. Do you want to go wine tasting? We have like a paddleboard rental company we partner with, or you could go axe throwing of those three things. What would you like to do? Um, I'm going to go with axe throwing. Oh my gosh, it's so fun. I've done it before. I love doing that. So the next thing I need is I have your information already, but I'm just curious who you'll be bringing as your plus one for that. Oh, um, I'm going to take my boyfriend, Todd. Todd Smith. All right, got it. Your boyfriend, you said then. Uh, yep. Awesome. I have so many. I have so many questions. <laughs> I have so yeah. many questions. And you're going to have questions, too, because, Becca, uh, you've been hoodwinked. I just want to tell you. Mm-hmm. You've, been oh. hood, you've been hoodwinked by your friend, Melinda. And it's kind of a long story. And we're a couple of uh, radio people from, I know you guys don't live here in the Twin Cities, but we are l- radio people from Minneapolis. And uh, Melinda put us up to this to call you because Melinda was worried. Remember the ring that you gave Melinda? On her birthday? Um, yeah, I do. Melinda's on the phone right now. Melinda, if you will, explain why that ring made you a little bit puzzled, Melinda. I don't want to now. <laughs> um, Hi, Melinda. Hi. Sorry. Um, well, I know this is all really weird. Um, yeah. A I'm a little bit. embarrassed right now. Um, okay, so you gave me, you know, the ring for my birthday, and I honestly just thought it was a little bit off-putting. It was a little weird. It just looked really expensive and nice, and I know, like, I didn't get you anything for your birthday, you know? I don't even know when your birthday is. I'm sorry. Um and I just was wondering if there was a meaning behind the gift, and it just, 
I don't know. When I'm going to help you out. She was, she was, I, I don't want to like put words in your mouth, but we, we've talked about this a lot. She's worried you might have had a little girl crush on her. And yeah, she, I didn't say she it. didn't want to uh, lead you on, but she also didn't want to hurt your feelings or embarrass you if it's not a girl crush. But I think this is what my question is. How the hell, Melinda, did you not know your friend Becca had a boyfriend? <laughs> Do you not listen when she talks to you? Do you never talk about Todd when you were around Melinda, Becca? I mean, I've like, uh, I've probably mentioned him, but like, I don't Maybe. think we talk about him in detail. Okay. No, we mostly talk about work stuff. Okay. Um, yeah. Because we both really don't like our boss, and it's mostly just complaining yeah. about. Oh, I God, I hear that. Am I right, that. Jenny? Oh, no, we love man. our boss. <laughs> okay, so kidding. So let me ask you, she felt a little bit weird that you gave her an expensive ring because a ring is kind of a personal little gesture, a little symbol. Um. Okay, so like, well, I guess just to clear up the first thing, um, the ring was like not expensive. It was like... I don't know. It was like forty bucks. Like oh. it, it, it wasn't. I mean, I guess yeah. It was like really cute and it looked nice and like sparkly, but like it, it wasn't super expensive. Well, I was going to ask Melinda. I'm like, I'm, I'm no jeweler, but I wouldn't know a forty dollar ring from a four hundred dollar ring. But you somehow. Yeah, apparently I don't. Yeah, either. apparently yeah, apparently Melinda, you don't either. You're not going to get hired <laughs> no, at chain company really jewelers. Nice. So are we all good here? So you don't have a girl crush. You just really like her, and you wanted to do some something nice yeah i think i think we like we get along well it's i think it's really important to have like good friends at work because work can be really stressful and i i was i don't know i was just feeling grateful and you know it was your birthday um and so just wanted to get you something and i saw that ring and i like i don't know i thought of you because we both talked about like how like much we liked um like the the de like the design pattern on it and uh -huh. um and so yeah i just thought you would like it but like i I wish you could have just, like, told me that instead of bringing me on the radio, but, like, I'm glad you talked about it now. Well, I'm glad you can put this behind you because it sounds like you two just kind of have a chemistry that I can kind of hear. Yeah. Um, so that's cool. And here's the thing, Melinda, you don't have to worry about it. She doesn't like you that way. And uh, the ring was 40 bucks, so uh, not even that expensive of a ring. <laughs> Like I said, I'm embarrassed now. Yeah, I would <laughs> I be. I'll be honest with you. I, I would be too. Really you know what? Yeah. And I didn't want to, if I was wrong, bring it up and then make it weird between us at work right. because, yeah, I do like talking to you and hanging out with you, obviously. And um, yeah. I, it, yeah, I made too much out of nothing. So I'm, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> but okay. I'm glad that it, think it all worked out. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think it's okay. I think we can we can move past this. As long as you don't put it on your ring finger, I think we'll be fine. <laughs> okay, deal. Hey, wait, hold on. I have a question. Yeah. Um, do I still get to go axe throwing? <laughs> uh, we didn't reveal that part yeah. of this, did we? Uh, about that. Uh, we got text messages about War of the Roses. Number one, this the first one that comes up online. Becca sounds hot. Fire okay. emoji. <laughs> I, 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 I didn't even think... Think about that one, but okay, Becca sounds hot. Melinda's the weird one in the situation. She's flattering herself more than she needs to. Melinda is self-centered, it seems like to me. Listen, I don't blame her, though, for thinking that the ring might have been worth more than it was. $44, as she I said, would, $45. I would probably look at a ring, too, because I'm not a big jewelry person, and so I'd be like, wow, this looks really expensive. <laughs> you know? I keep waiting for my friend Nate to get me a ring. You just said you don't want him to do Change that. Change my mind. I oh, wanted to be a nice. One. I wanted a nice. I wanted a nice okay. one with a diamond, a beautiful center stone. That feels like a very don't romantic situation. Don't be judgy. <laughs> don't be judgy. I'm not being Let judgy. Let me live I'm my just, life. I'm just putting the cards on the table that you do. You want to marry him now? Um, get rid of Susan? No. Okay. Well, uh, another one. A text says, um, "Oh my God, this is like a radio train wreck. It's such a bad idea." <laughs> But you can't turn away. And uh, finally, um, uh, this is going to be awkward for those coworkers now, which, yeah, probably true. Hey, listen, if you want to do a War of the Roses sometime, send an email to Ryan Show at KDWB.com. If you want to download old War of the Roses, a lot of people like want to binge on old War of the Roses episodes. There is a channel on the iHeartRadio app. 
just search Dave Ryan War of the Roses, and there's like years of War of the Roses on there. There are. Um, uh, that you can listen to and binge, and people go on road trips and say, I listen to them all the way to the Black Hills, and I still got more to go. Mm-hmm. Check out the Dave Ryan channel. Uh, you can podcast us uh, and listen anytime you want to. You can listen to us live. You can listen on the free iHeartRadio app. Seriously, there's so many apps out there. I get it. There's Spotify and Apple Music. This is free, the iHeartRadio app. And uh, free never sounded so good. we got to figure out what else is going on from Jonathan Fogel. Every week after War of the Roses, we talk to our attorney, Jonathan Fogel, from Fogel Family Law. Uh, Good morning, Jonathan. Good morning. How are you guys? Doing good. Uh, So, jewelry came up on War of the Roses with a ring, and it turned out it didn't mean anything. And but, of course, John, you could bring up uh, you could bring up uh, uh, a potbelly pig, and Jonathon would say, (laughs) you know, I had a couple. Don't get me started. No, yeah, exactly. Started on potbelly pig. What do you know? What what does this story remind you of? In your experience as a family divorce attorney, what comes to mind with jewelry? So with this one, right, it was about jewelry. And, and it's not about a divorce, but this one's more about a marriage. So there was a case a while ago where a 20-year-old bride-to-be had just inherited some earrings, like these really expensive four-carat earrings, and she was excited to wear them at the wedding. But on the big day, they disappeared, right? And the woman was determined that she believed that the culprit was her soon-to-be mother-in-law. Oh, wow. Right? Okay. So, so she calls the police. The police come, and they find the earrings in her mother-in-law's purse. Wow. And, and when they ask, you know, do you want to press? This is on the wedding day, right? So yeah. when they ask if she wants to press charges, she decides that she doesn't want to do that. She, I guess she just feel, felt that maybe that wouldn't be a great way to start off the marriage. I can't even imagine what would be going through the mother-in-law's mind unless she just is one of those people that has to steal something. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. I mean, have you not seen Disney movies? Mother-in-laws are always terrible. There's right? a movie called <laughs> Monster-in-Law. You know? yep. Yeah. We used to do a yeah, bit called, what did we do, Mother-in-Law Monday? We did Monster-in-Law Monday. We actually just did it recently, and we should do it again because we got so many emails. Write it down, Jenny. <laughs> yeah. Monster-in-Law Seriously. Monday. Good bit. Yes. Um, so no. whenever we talk to Jonathan, you know, he's always got a story and then he's got some advice because Jonathan has seen it all. And there's always something that we can learn, whether you're married, you want to stay married, whether you're divorcing, you need some advice. What do we got for tips this week, Jonathan? Yeah. So my tips again, staying on that theme of jewelry or personal property, right? I see this when people go through divorce, right? We all hear about people dividing retirement accounts and big stuff. But what we forget about is there's a lot of little stuff that we have, personal property, couches, chairs, jewelry, things like that. And I'll tell you this, the courts, the last thing they want to do is get involved with arguments over those kind of assets, right? And the reality is people think that their stuff is always worth way more than it is, Mm -hmm. right? You know, all this couch we bought for X amount of dollars, it's just not worth it anymore. You know, the way the courts look at it is they say, well, your personal property is worth what you could get for it at a garage sale, right? right? Or these days, you know, what, Facebook Marketplace, right? Something like that. So, but some people will spend a lot of money having personal property appraisers come out and appraise all of their stuff. Or a lot of times they'll pay a third party, like an arbitrator, to make a decision on how to divide personal property. And my advice to people is don't ever spend more in fees than it would just cost to go out and replace the stuff. Okay, gotcha. Okay. So people will think like, oh, my God, okay, so this uh, aquarium is worth thousands of dollars, <laughs> and the, you, you sell it on Facebook Marketplace, you maybe get 38 bucks for it. That's right, and that's what it's going to be worth is 38 bucks. They don't give you a replacement cost or things like that unless you own things like collectibles, right? There's some people that have a lot of collectibles or artwork. Yep. Those are maybe worth a lot more, but your stuff, as I like to call it, isn't worth what you think it is. Very interesting. So don't fight about it. I'm on your website, and it says uh, you've been on War of the Roses. You've been on the Anderson Cooper Show. You've been on <laughs> Care 11. You've been on Twin Cities Live. Do we need to start calling you a celebrity uh, lawyer? I would hope that you would not ever call me that. I'm going to start it. I'm going to start it just to get under his skin. What, were you, calling, what like, were you on Anderson Cooper for? 
Oh, I had written an article about uh, manimony, as I called it, which was more wives were starting to pay their husbands alimony, and so we had a, they did a big show about it. So they went, I went out there and was on the show to talk about it. That's really cool. That wow, cool. what a story. Um, uh, if you want to meet with Jonathan Fogel about everything from manimony to uh, stolen <laughs> earrings to um, uh, whatever it is you want to meet about, uh, I got two ways to get a hold of Jonathan. Number one, his website is really easy, Fogel Family Law, F O G E L, FogelFamilyLaw.com. You can find out there's like an about tab, uh, there's a mediation tab, resources, contact tab. And his phone number is right there in the middle of the web page, and you can call that whether you go to the web page or not. 612-822-6244. 612-822-6244. I have to ask you, though, who is your favorite television lawyer? Oh, my favorite television lawyer? Yeah, I would say oh, for me God. it's Saul Goodman, but I don't know who you're going to you pick. You know what? I would say that this day and age, Saul Goodman, Matlock still you know, holds a special place in my heart. Is that right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Good to know. All right. <laughs> Have Jonathan fight for you, whether it's mediation, whether it's custody, whether it's payment support. A lot of people don't get divorced because they put it off because they don't know what the first step is. Go ahead and talk to Jonathan. Find out the first step, or maybe your first step is going to FogelFamilyLaw.com. And, you know, we're not here to encourage divorce, but it is a fact of life. You know, just like getting your appendix taken out, we don't encourage it, but sometimes it happens. Get a hold of Jonathan on FogelFamilyLaw.com.